Hello everyone. Uh, this lesson is about using intercepts. It fits in well with what we've been doing because standard form is a great way to locate the intercepts of a line. I'm going to write out the standard form for a linear equation right here. AX plus BY equals C. And remember, A, B, and C are coefficients. And both A and B cannot be zero. In fact, if you want to have a linear function, B can't be zero either. So we're going to focus on this standard form. We've been practicing locating A, B, and C, and now we're going to put them to good use. First of all, I need to tell you what intercepts are. And that's the next slide. So here you can see we have a picture of the graph of a linear function. And I want to define for you what I mean when I say the intercepts. The intercepts are the places where your line crosses either the x-axis or the y-axis. And often our linear functions have both an x-intercept and a y-intercept. Every once in a while it'll only have a horizontal uh, excuse me, a y-intercept because it's a horizontal line. And if it's not a function but a vertical line, it'll just have an x-intercept. But most of the lines we work with have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. So, for example, the place where my line hits the x-axis is that point right there. The coordinates for that happen to be negative 4, 0. And the place where my line hits the y-axis is right there. And those coordinates happen to be 0, negative 3. Okay. The intercepts are the places where our lines, our linear functions, cross the x-axis and the y-axis. It's a pretty standard and understandable definition. Now when we talk about those intercepts, I already mentioned that the coordinates were 0, 3 for the y-intercept and negative 4, 0 for the x-intercept. But in standard practice, the language that we'll use is that the y-intercept is negative 3 and the x-intercept is negative 4. We do that because every y-intercept has an x-coordinate of 0 and every x-intercept has an x-coordinate, excuse me, a y-coordinate of 0. So if we're going to write a generic notation for a y-intercept, it would be 0, comma, some y number. And for an x-intercept, it would be some x number, comma, 0. And we can use this to our advantage with our standard form. Just for your information, um, this... Uh, formula for this line here, the red line, is 3x, hold on a second here, come on baby, 3x plus 4y equals negative 12. 3x plus 4y equals negative 12. That's the standard form for this line right here. I didn't mention that before, but it's going to come in handy in a second. The reason I mention that now is because I want you to see how we can quickly figure out, without looking at the graph, what this y-intercept is going to be. The trick is that we're just going to plug in 0 for the x-coordinate and we'll solve for y. Okay, let's do that on another screen here. So I've cleaned up the screen a little bit here to give us more room to work. So I mentioned that I wanted to show you how I could find this x-intercept without ever looking at the graph. Since we know the standard form for our equation is 3x plus 4y equals negative 12, what we'll do, we know the x-intercept has a y-coordinate of 0, so we'll plug 0 in for y and then see what that does for us. 4 times 0 is 0, so this equation is just 3x equals negative 12. We know that we can use inverse operations to solve for x, 
and look at what we end up with. Exactly what we said, which is that the x-intercept is negative 4. Now, I want you to notice something. When we put a 0 in for y, it gets rid of letter B. And we're left with just A and C. And notice, to get the negative 4, we just did C divided by A. That's going to be a thing in a few minutes. Let's do the same math, but we'll try and zero in on this y-intercept. When you find the y-intercept in an equation, we know the x-coordinate is 0. So we're just going to put a 0 in where x is and then see what that does for us. In this case, the a term turns into a 0, right? And so we just get 4y equals negative 12. We're going to divide by 4 this time. And sure enough, we get that y-intercept, which is negative 3. Oops. How about if I say equals negative 3? Notice, once again, what we did was c divided by this guy, right? This is our letter B. So we did C divided by B to get the y-intercept. Okay? And that's going to be a thing in a couple of minutes here. So in standard form, if you have a picture, obviously you can just locate the intercepts. But in standard form, you can quickly find the intercepts without ever looking at the graph just by plugging in zeros. And because you're always going to end up with either C divided by A or C divided by B, it's even easier than that. What we're going to do is we're just going to locate A, B, and C, and we'll do the math, and then we'll have the formula. Now, as you know, we've been keeping a formula list for this chapter because there's all sorts of formulas that go along with linear equations, and we're going to add two more to that list right now. Okay, so don't forget that standard form for a linear equation is ax plus by equals c. And we just showed that we can come up with a standard form formula for the x-intercept. If we want the x-intercept, we put 0 in for y, which gets rid of the b term. And then to solve for the x-intercept, we simply solve ax equals c by dividing both sides by a. And we end up with x equals c over a. And that is going to be our standard form x-intercept formula. It's x equals c over a. Okay, add that one to your formula list. If you want to know the x-intercept, you do c divided by a. You compute that value. That gives you the x-intercept. Similarly, if we want to find the y-intercept, let me move this down a little bit. If we want to find the y-intercept, we plug in 0 for x, and that gives us by equals c. We divide both sides by b, and we end up with c over b, right? And that's going to be the formula we'll use for the standard form y-intercept. We say y equals, and this time it's going to be c over b. And that's the formula that we'll use. Please add that to your list. If you want the y-intercept from standard form, you do c divided by b. Now, we have an assignment today that we're going to work on in class, which um, is going to require excuse me, that we use these two formulas. We're going to use them to quickly draw graphs of lines. We won't need those xy tables. If we can locate the intercepts, we can put the two dots down and we can draw the line. Okay? Let's try that right now. So by now, you should have this paper in your possession. And if you don't, we'll pause the video until you get it. Our job is to graph each of these 
lines, which are all in standard form, all but one actually. And then whichever letter the line points to, we'll put down the box at the bottom and we'll solve the puzzle, which is why does a poor man drink coffee? Okay, let's see if we can figure this thing out. I'm going to do three of these with you to make sure you understand how to, how to attack them. Okay, I want to start with problem one. And your job right away, and you'll probably have to do this on the back of the paper, for problem one, your job is to locate A, B, and C. And I think you'll agree that if you look at this equation, it's already in standard form, and A is negative 3, B is 2, and C is 2. And what we're going to do is quickly draw a graph of this thing by using the intercepts. Okay? So, to find the x-intercept, we do c over a, which is 2 over negative 3, or negative 2 thirds. All right, That's my x-intercept. So on the x-axis, I'm going to put a dot on negative 2 thirds. Now, there's no fractions on this thing, so let's just assume that these are going by 1's and that 2 thirds is about right there. It's close. Okay. To find the y-intercept, we do c divided by b. c divided by b would be 2 divided by 2. That answer is 1. So my y-intercept is 1. On the y-axis, I'm going to go up and put a dot on 1. Once you have those two dots, even if they're really close together, get your ruler out and draw a nice long line through and past those two dots. And when you do that, it will point at one of the letters on the picture. You can see that this one points at letter R. So we'll go down to number one in the boxes below. And anytime we see a one, we're going to put the letter R. It's going to help us solve the puzzle. So the trick was pick out A, B, and C. Do your calculations for the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Plot those two dots. Draw a nice long line that crosses through those dots using your ruler and figure out which letter you hit. Not too bad, right? Okay, make sure you have this one down and we're going to do another one. Okay, we're actually going to do number two together also. First thing we need to do is pick out A, B, and C. Again, you may have to do this on the back of your paper, but I have room over here on the side. Uh, there's no number in front of x, so remember there's a 1 a coefficient there. So a is actually 1. Here b is negative 4, because they make that a plus negative 4, and then c is 8. Okay, now let's find these intercepts. So the x-intercept is c divided by a which is 8 over 1, which is 8. And so that's my x-intercept. Now here's the problem. x only goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that dot is not on the grid. We're not going to panic with that one yet. We'll have to figure out something else. Let's do the y-intercept and see if that one shows up on the grid. y, the y-intercept, is c over b, which is 8 over negative 4. 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. Who goody. That one is on my grid. So my y-intercept is on my grid. Here's the problem. We cannot draw a graph of this line unless we have two dots. Two or more, right? That's why we made our tables with five dots so that if we lost a few, we could still draw the line. Well, I have to have at least two, and my x-intercept is not on the grid. So let me show you how you can find another dot. Since we know that 8 is out here somewhere, let me use green to just, er, some weird vet, I'll use green. I think you'll agree that 8 is out here somewhere, right? I'll put a dot where I think 8 is. That means that at the x-axis I'm going to be out here, so I figure for uh, y equals negative 1, I'm going to be in this range. 
somewhere in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with that hunch and I'm going to plug a negative 1 because that's where this y value is. A negative 1 in where the y is. When I plug negative 1 in where the y is of the original equation, I get x minus 4 times negative 1 equals 8. And we can solve this equation. This is just x plus 4 equals 8. When you solve that with inverse operations, I think you'll agree that we get x equals uh, negative, uh, positive 4. 8 minus 4 is 4. So what we've created here is a new point, which has the 4 for the x-coordinate and the negative 1 for the y-coordinate. So that would be 4 comma negative 1. And I'm going to plot that dot, which was right where we thought it would be, about right there. So even though I can't plot this green dot that I drew out here in space, I can plot my y-intercept, which was at negative 2, and then I had to go and find another point by plugging in a y-value to figure out. You could also plug an x-value in if you wanted, but solving for x is a little easier here than solving for y. The point is, now that we have our two dots, we can draw our line. And I think you'll agree that it's pointing over here at this letter. And so that's the letter that you'll put down in the boxes whenever, she, whenever you see uh, a 2. Okay, I wanted to show you this one because this y-intercept did not end up being on the grid and so we had to come down here and do a little extra math. We just substituted in a different y-value because we knew it. We thought negative 1, a y-value of negative 1 would show up in my green circle there. And it did. You could have plugged in any y-value you wanted but I think you'll agree, the higher the y value goes, the more off the grid it would be. So you'd have to pick a y value in the negative uh, range on our number line. Okay, that one was a little more challenging. Let's try one more, and then I'm going to let you do the other six on your own. The last one we're going to look at is problem nine. And the reason I wanted to look at this is because it does not start out in standard form. It's y minus 3 equals 0, and in order to get it into standard form, I have to move that 3 to the other side. And so this is really just y equals 3. Okay? Now the letters here are a, b, and c still, right, because this is still in standard form. When there's no x term, we talked yesterday about how that is just 0. When there's no x term, a must be 0. There is a B term, there is a, a Y term, so there is a value for B, but it's not written here, right? It's the old mystery number 1, which is there. So B is a 1, and then we just found out that C was a positive 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our X-intercept and our Y-intercept. X is, uh, the X-intercept is 3 divided by 0, uh, C over A, 3 divided by 0, uh-oh, what? You can't divide by 0. Remember, that's undefined. Now, that's not weird. Don't panic. What it means is we do not have an x-intercept. There will not be an x-intercept. There will only be a y-intercept. That means our line doesn't hit the x-axis. The only kind of line that doesn't hit the x-axis is a horizontal line. So once we find out the y-intercept, we're just going to draw a horizontal line at that spot. The y-intercept is c over b, which is 3 divided by 1. Ooh, good. That is just y equals 3, which, of course, was what we had up there. So I'm going to put a dot at the y-intercept of 3. Remember what I said. If you don't have a, an x-intercept, this must be a horizontal line. So at this point... I can draw a horizontal line through my y-intercept and look at what letter it points at. Letter P is what you're going to put for problem 9 down in the boxes. And there you have it. So for each of these problems, pick out A, B, and C. Be careful. Like this problem, there's one other problem that's not in standard form. 
So you have to put in standard form first and then pick out A, B, and C. To do the intercepts, you do C divided by A to get the x-intercept, and you do C divided by B to get the y-intercept. You plot those two points, you draw your line straight across the entire grid, and it will point at one of these letters. That's how easy it is to graph lines when you know the equation in standard form. You get the intercept C over A, C over B, plot the two dots, bing, bang, boom, you have a line. Okay? You have six other problems to finish. I also don't want you to panic when you have fractions. I showed you how to deal with that in number one. So you should be good to go. All right? Good luck.